Welcome to Electron Online. Now we're ready for round three. We've already gone through two rounds of the Kalman filter process. Now we're going to do the third round. By now, you're probably getting a good feel of how to do this for a two-dimensional problem where we are tracking an airplane for both position and velocity. We're going to do it a little bit faster now. So the first three major steps, we're going to calculate the predicted state matrix. We're going to calculate the predicted uh, process covariance matrix, and we're going to calculate the Kalman gain. And those are the equations we need to use to do that. And we're going to simplify a little bit now, realizing that in a lot of cases, like in this case, the H matrices are simply identity matrices because they're only used to convert the format of one to the other. And in this case, it's very simplistic. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's start out with calculating the predicted state matrix. We've already put in the A matrix, the B matrix. We've put in the state matrix from the previous round, and that will still be the acceleration as we estimated, as we predicted it. Calculating this, we have to multiply this times this. This ends up being the sum of those two when we add those together. 4, 5, 5, 3.8 plus 284.3 equals, that would be 4838.1. 4, and 284.3 for the velocity. Add to that the effect of the acceleration, a one and a two. And so that becomes equal to, in the numerator, we get 4839.1. In the denominator, we get 286.3. That will be the new predicted matrix or state matrix. Now calculating the predicted process covariance matrix, we have to multiply this times this. So we get uh, one times that, that would be 187.5, uh, 10.5 over here, zero here, and 10.5 over here, multiplying that times 1011. And again, we're going to call the error in the process zero. When we multiply that, we get the following matrix 187.5, 10.5. This now will become also 10.5 and 10.5. Remember, like we did before, we're going to get rid of the, the cross terms because we want to simplify our example at this point. Let's assume that there's no relationship between position and velocity. Therefore, we don't have to consider the cross terms in the covariance matrix. So this becomes approximately equal to 187.5, 0, 0, and 10.5. Now we can plug that in here. So this now becomes 187.5, 0, 0, 10.5. And again here, 180, oops, that's a little too small here. 187.5, 0, 0, and 10.5. And all we have to do is add those two in the denominator. So the numerator, 187.5, 0, 0, 10.5. And in the denominator, we simply add those together. 625 added to that, that would be, we get 812.5. That's zero, this is zero, and 10.5 added to 36 is 46.5. Now we divide the denominator into the numerator, and we get the following Kalman gain. 187.5 divided by 812.5. Kalman gain now gives us 0 0.231, 0, 0. And there we get 10.5 divided by 46. Oop, let's do it again, 46.5. We get 0 0.226, 0 0.226. And there's our new Kalman gain that we're going to use to come up with the new state matrix based upon the predicted matrix and the new measured values that we're getting into our system. So we got the new predicted state matrix, we got the new predicted process covariance matrix, and we have the new Kalman gain for round three. Now we're ready to do the second part of round three where we then calculate the new process matrix, or I should say the new uh, state matrix and the new process covariance matrix which will then set us up for the next round, for round four, which in this case we're not going to do. I think three rounds is enough. We'll graph what the three rounds look like to get a really good idea of how the Kalman gain process works. And that's how it's done.